where we left off last time was we were in section 5.3. We're talking about special factoring. We talked about factoring differences of squares. We talked about factoring trinomial squares. So before we get into today's last little bit of section uh, 5.3, just going to give you two quick review problems to do, just to make sure. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. So here's uh, here's the first one. Let's say that we have uh, 81 x squared, and then we're going to do uh, minus 16. So go ahead and factor that. And then the other one that we have is uh, 9 x squared plus 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 30x plus 25. Okay, so two quick review problems of just the two things we've already done from section 5.3, and then we'll roll into the new stuff. So if you're watching the video, you do those two. So let's go through these two problems. Difference of squares. Okay, we're going to have two factors. Since my firsts are 81x squared, this is a difference of squares. What is the first in each of my parentheses going to be? 9x. Awesome. That is great. Since my lasts are 16, what are the lasts of each of the parentheses going to be? Positive and negative, and a positive and negative what? Four. Awesome. Great job. Difference of squares. Remember, it has to be a subtraction. And then both of these terms have to be something, the same thing times itself. That's what makes it a square. On the test, I'm not going to trick you about the sum of squares, but on the My Math Lab, I think there's a problem or two where they ask you if this is factorable. Okay, so if this was a plus, you can't do it. This is a trinomial. Uh, it's going to be a trinomial square, but I told you last time, if you didn't want to learn the shortcut, okay, that is totally fine by me. It doesn't matter to me either way. You can do this by the AC method. You can multiply the 9 times the 25, and 
whatever that turns out to be and use your calculator to figure out what two factors of that add up to 30 it'll work it'll work okay that's that is totally fine but the shortcut was this so first you have to identify if it is a trinomial square because it can have a nine here and a 25 here and not be okay always depends on the middle term so nine is three times three 25 is five times five and then i take one of the threes and I multiply it by one of the fives, and that gives me 15. And does anyone remember how I know if it's a trinomial square? It's half of the middle. Yeah, good memory. It's half of the middle. Is 15 half of the middle? Yes, it is. So this is a trinomial square. So if you remember the shortcut, you can do this on the test. Okay, this is perfectly legitimate and fine. Uh, you don't have to do any other work other than say, okay. 9x squared is going to be 3x and 3x. 25 is going to be 5 times 5. And since they add up to a plus 30, I'm going to put a plus right there and I'm done. When you know it's a trinomial square, you can just skip right to the right to the factor. But again, if you don't want to do that, you could do the AC method on that as well. Okay, that will that will always work. So that catches us up to where we left off. So where we left off is this. Uh, this is the last section of section 5.3. And we're going to talk about one other thing to factor. We're going to talk about what's called sums and differences of cubes. All right, last class and in the last video, we mentioned what the word difference was. And just to refresh, refresh your memory, the word difference represents, subtra represents subtract. Just in case you're not familiar with this word, the word sum. What does the word sum mean I'm doing? Addition, yes. Okay, so sums mean to add. So when you're dealing with what's called a cube, a cube, you can do whether it's a sum or a difference. Unlike squares, okay, I'm trying to be super clear about this. Squares, it has to be a difference. Something is a cube if it is the same number times itself three times. So just let me just, because we're probably less familiar with those than we are squares, let me just list some perfect cubes. And your calculator can give you this information. I'm not giving you anything special here, but I'm just going to go through some numbers and I'm going to cube them. And these are the perfect cubes. So one cube, one times one times one is one. Two cube, two times two times two is eight. Three cube, three times three times three is 27. Four cube, four times four times four is 64. Five cubed, five times five times five is 125. We're getting close to my capacity to multiply in my head. Six cubed, I don't, six times six is 36. 216. And let, I'll go one more just because I have room for one more. Seven cubed. Seven times seven is 49. I think that's 343. But if anybody has a calculator and wants to double check that, you can. Okay, so there's the first seven perfect cubes. You can keep going eight, nine, 10, 11. Uh, it does, I mean, but your calculator, again, I'm not doing anything different than your calculator to tell you. Just wanted to write those there so we could recognize that. So, how do you factor a sum or a difference of cubes? Great question. So, either way, whether it's a sum or a difference, they follow the exact same pattern. So, I'm going to do one, and then I've got four or five that you're going to do just so that we can get used to this pattern. Okay, that's all it is. It's a matter of doing enough so that your brain internalizes it and remembers. So here we go, here's my example, x cubed plus 27. We're gonna factor this. It's a sum of cubes. 27 is on my list, it's three times three times three. X cubed clearly is a cube because it has a power of three. Okay, so that's how I identify it. So whether it's a sum or a difference, it's going to follow the same pattern. I'm going to do my best that I can to illustrate the pattern. If you have any questions, let me know. And then I'm going to let you practice so that you can work out any 
uh, any problems that you might be having. So here we go. There's always two factors to a sum or a difference of cubes. There's always two, okay? There's gonna be one that has two terms, and there's gonna be one factor that has three terms. The first factor that has two terms, each term is just going to be what's called the cube root of each of these terms, meaning what times itself three times gives you each of these. Now, before you leave today, if you don't know how to find a cube root on your calculator, let me know. Okay, it'll take us five seconds to find the button so that you so that you can do it, and then you don't even have to memorize the perfect cubes. Your calculator will tell you if it's a perfect cube or not. So here we go, the first terms. X cubed is X times X times X. So the first term is gonna be X. Positive 27, positive 27 is three times three times three. So this is a positive three. So each of these terms, each of these two terms is just the cube root of the originals. Yeah, if I'm not clear on something, please let me know. I try my best, but if you have something you're struggling with, I need to know that. So the first factor is just the cube root of each of the two terms. The second factor that has three terms, here's how, I, this is how I remember it. Okay, that this is just how I've coded it in my brain. My firsts, what, whatever I put here for my firsts, times x has to give me x cubed. So what can I put here that times x will give me x cubed? Yeah, I need two. I, have, I need to get three x's at the end. I've got one here, so I need two more. x squared times x will give me x cubed. Those are my firsts. So I'm just gonna put a little f under this, or you might write the word firsts. That's just for my first x squared times x gives me x cubed. I'm going to skip the middle for just a minute. We'll come back to the middle. The last, I'm going to put a little L here for my last. What here times three will give me 27? Positive nine. There you go. Now, here's how you always get the middle. This works whether it's a sum, whether it's a difference, okay? I'm trying to give you a process rather than give you a formula. Hopefully, you do a few, but this will be nice and easy to remember. What you do for the middle term is you take these two terms right here, you multiply them together. What's x times 3? I heard somebody say it. x times 3 is 3x, and then you change the sign. So instead of a positive, you make it negative. So I'm just going to write under here, you multiply the terms, and you change the sign. So x times 3 is 3x. Three I change it to a negative, and I'm going to put negative 3x in the middle right there. And there's my factors. All right, so the best way to learn this is just to practice. So here we go. Here's a nice relaxing one for you that's very similar to mine. So I would like you, once you're done writing stuff down, to factor y cubed plus 8. Okay, factor that sum of cubes using the little process that I showed you right there.
right, let's give this a try. We're going to do we're going to do several more of these because I know this process is is a little complicated at first. So we got two factors always. This is a sum of cubes. So my first factor is going to have two terms. My second factor is going to have three terms. Just from my notes over there, the first the first two terms are the cube root of the originals. So what's the first term going to be right here? And then what'd you say? Plus two. Yes. Track it with me. Anybody got a question so far? I'm sorry. Okay, because I want what number gives what number times itself three times gives me eight. Okay, so two times two times two gives me eight. So that's why I put a two right there. Okay, great question. I'm glad you asked it. That's why over here I put a three right here because three times three times three gave me 27. Okay, so we're that's called that number that three that's three times three times three that's called the cube root. Okay, on your calculator, if you uh, if you have a scientific calculator, you have either one of two buttons depending on your brand. Some of them, uh, some of them will have a little button that looks like that. I'll have a little three right there. And we'll talk more about cube roots in our last unit of this of this uh, semester. Uh, I wish we could have taught, we probably should talk about them before, uh, but you can use that button. Other calculators will have a little X there. Uh, and that means that your calculator can do any sort of roots, no matter what. And I can show you how to use that button. They're both real easy to use. Okay, so uh, if you wanna know. So what you would do on your calculator when you see this button is you put in eight and you hit the cube root button and it will tell you two. Okay. Great question, thank you. All right, so then the next one, the three terms. I get this by examining the structure. My first, whatever is here times y has to give me y cubed. So what, what do I have to put here? Okay, y squared. y squared times y, two plus one when I have my exponents is three. I'm gonna skip the middle for a moment. The last, my last, what's here times two has to give me eight. So what am I gonna put here? Okay, you're doing great. I hear lots of voices, that makes me happy. And then the middle term right here, I get by multiplying these two things together. What's y times two? Two y, and then I change the sign. Instead of a positive two y, it becomes negative two y. There's my two factors. And you can multiply this back together. If we have time at the end of class after we've done what we need to do, uh, it's all this is is somebody clever, like when we foiled together uh, the, at the beginning of the section last time, x plus nine times x minus nine, and we saw that the middle stuff canceled out and we had a difference of squares. Somebody clever at some point noticed that when you multiply these two things together, that this negative two Y causes all the middle jump to cancel out. And you're just left with Y cubed plus eight. So we're just taking advantage of something somebody else at some point already did for us. All right, here's another one. We're just gonna keep practicing. So try this for me. This time I'm gonna put a minus sign in. So give, give it your best shot. Uh, and let's see how we do. So we've got y cubed minus 64. And if you don't have your calculator, you can notice that positive 64 is on my perfect cubes list over there.
All right, here's my pattern. So this time we have a minus. So remember, if you didn't know exactly what to do with the minus, that's okay. We're learning. Okay, so don't beat yourself up. So my first here is going to be what? A y. Y times y times y is y cubed. Now this is a minus 64. So what do you think is going to go here now? A minus what? Four. If you put a negative 64 into your calculator, you can take the cube roots of negative numbers. It'll come out to be negative four because negative four times negative four times negative four. Well, the four times four times four will give you 64. A negative times a negative, what do the first two negatives give you? A positive. And then a positive times the last negative will give you a negative 64. Okay, so this is negative four now. So again, if you didn't know that, that's okay. We're we're learning as we're going here. And so now my first, what here times y gives me y cubed? Yep, we'll change that in a minute, make that a little bit more of an interesting question. What here times negative four gives me negative 64? Positive 16. By the way, another way to look at that is division. Negative 64 divided by negative 4 is positive 16. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Remember, four, factoring is just unmultiplying, so it's the same kind of thing as division. And then now I multiply these two things. What do I get when I multiply these two terms together? What's y times negative 4? Negative 4y, and then we change the sign. So what am I going to put in the middle right here? Positive 4y. Okay, we change the sign. Same pattern, even when it's a minus sign. Well, in case you didn't get that, because I understand that was a new little, a new little bit, and uh, it might not have been super clear what to do. Try this. Okay, this is another subtraction. I would like you to do eight y cubed minus one hundred twenty-five. All right, here goes. So the, diff the thing that we've added to this is there's a number here, but again, doesn't change the process. But again, if you made a mistake, it's the first time doing it. So, so let's just go thing by thing here. Eight is what times what times what? And then y cubed is y times y times y. So this first term is 2y. And then minus 125. What's the cube root of minus 125? Negative five. So now what here times two y is going to give me eight y cubed? Four y squared. Again, if you think about that as division, eight y cubed divided by two y. Eight divided by two is four. 
y cubed divided by y is y squared. I'm going to skip the middle. Then what here times negative 5 gives me negative 125. Positive 25. Again, a negative divided by a negative. 125 divided by 5 is 25. And then for the middle term, I multiply these two things together. 2y times negative 5 is negative 10y. And I change the sign to become plus 10y. And there's my difference of cubes uh, that has been factored. Here's another one. Do this. Uh, let's do 64 x cubed plus 27. This will be two more to practice. Sixty four x cubed plus twenty seven. So you have your list of perfect cubes and your notes that I wrote, or you you use your calculator. What's the cube root of sixty four x cubed? Four x. Four times four times four is sixty four. Cube root twenty seven. We've already used twenty seven, I believe. That is three times three times three. So there's my two terms. Then what here times four x gives me sixty four x cubed? Or another way to look at it. 64x cubed divided by 4x is what? And my last, what here times 3 gives me 27, or another way to look at it, 27 divided by 3 gives me? And then the middle term always follows this pattern. I multiply these two things together. 4x times 3 is 12x. Then I change the sign to negative 12x. And there's my factoring. we got two more that we're going to do is we're trying to catch on to this pattern. So if you've got anything that you're disrupted about, please let me know. That's what I'm here for. Try this problem right here. I'm just going to move the term with a one to be the second term. So let's try this. 27, again, the numbers, we're trying to keep them relatively relaxed. So you're going to see a lot of the same numbers. 27x cubed plus y cubed, one y cubed.
All right, let's try this out. Two terms, three terms. 27x cubed, the, the cube root of that is 3x. I've got a plus, the cube root of y cubed is, is y. We've seen that a few times. And so now what here times 3x gives me 27x cubed. Well, 27 divided by 3 is 9 and x squared. My last, what here times y is y cubed. That's going to be y squared. And then finally, 3x times y is 3xy. And I changed the sign to minus 3xy. Here's the last problem. This is how we ended both, uh, or yeah, this is how we ended when we talked about differences of squares. We did something like this. So this is 3x cubed minus 192. And again, at first glance, like we said last time, that doesn't look like a difference of cubes, it doesn't look like a difference of squares or anything. First thing we should always look for is what between are my two terms? Do they have a what? Common factor. Yeah, awesome. So they do. So use your calculator. They have a common factor. And so factor out that common factor, and then you're going to have a difference of cubes left after that. All right, when you factor three out of this, three x squared, excuse me, three x cubed divided by three is x cubed minus 192 divided by three. Is that 64 when you pop that into your calculator? Yeah. All right, so I think we actually already factored x cubed minus 64. Uh, if not, we did something super similar. So x cubed, the cube root of that is x. Negative 64, the cube root of that is negative four x squared times x gives me x cubed. 16 times negative 4 gives me negative 64. And when I multiply these two things together, x times negative 4 is negative 4x. I change the sign to positive 4x, and there's my factors. One last thing to note, when you factor out a common factor out of anything, that has to be part of your final answer. Don't leave it off. It has to be there. 